everyone, welcome here. If you're new here, my name is Rebecca. If you're not new here, welcome back. Thank you for coming back and watching another video. So happy holidays. The holidays are officially upon us. And in today's video, I thought I would decorate in a sustainable and minimal way for the holidays. So to be honest, I actually usually don't really decorate for the holidays. I always spend holidays at my parents' house, but with the current pandemic and with the severity of the pandemic in the United States, that's not really an option this year. So me, Murphy, and Gypsy are gonna be in our house for the holidays, so I thought it would be nice to actually decorate this year. But if you know me, if you know this channel, I am a minimalist, I try and live as sustainably as possible. So I wanted to find a way to decorate my house that felt reflective of my personal style and the decor of our house but also in a way that reflected my minimalist and sustainable principles. So I'm gonna take you along as I decorate my house today and give you a few tips along the way of how you can potentially decorate in a sustainable and minimal fashion for the holidays. All right, with all that said, let's dive in. All right, so first things first, I really wanted to have a tree. I wanted something small and I didn't really want to get a fake tree, even though I like that from a sustainability standpoint when you look at it through the lens of the idea that you can use it year after year. They're typically made of plastic, they typically have a really high footprint when it comes to production. And growing up, we always decorated a real tree, so having a fake tree just wasn't really in alignment with what I wanted to do. So instead, I decided to get a potted tree. Here's the thing, when you buy a Christmas tree, you're buying a tree at the end of its life. You're buying a tree that was grown and cut down so that you could have it in your house for a couple weeks or a month. But if you buy a potted tree, you're buying a tree at the beginning of its life. So you're bringing it indoors, you can let it grow a little bit indoors, and then we personally are gonna plant our tree after Christmas. So we got a desert pine, something that was indigenous to the area, something that would thrive when we planted it outside. It doesn't really look necessarily like a traditional Christmas tree or like the traditional Christmas pine, but it's still cute and it's still a tree. So if you have property or own your land, I think it might be kind of a fun thing to like plant your tree every year after Christmas and then see them grow over the years. It's like you'll end up with a little Christmas forest. And then for the lights on the tree, I did want to do string lights. I wasn't finding a bunch of things I could do from a sustainability standpoint, but I did opt for LED instead of like the traditional incandescent light. LED is just has a little bit of a lighter footprint. It's going to last longer. So overall, it's a little bit more of a sustainable choice when it comes to lights. And then for actual decorations, I wanted to opt for things that could all be compostable in the end and things that I could make myself. So I'm starting with something very traditional, which is a cranberry and popcorn garlic. So I bought the popcorn in bulk and then I popped it myself and then using a needle and thread I did three popcorn and then three cranberries and I basically strung enough to go around the tree one time and then I did a second strand that I was going to use for garland above one of our sliders in the living room. And what I love about this is that after the holidays, I can throw this entire thing in my compost and just compost it. And then I also wanted to do something to cover the pot that the tree came in. It just came in a plastic pot. So I wanted to make it look a little bit better without buying something new. I didn't want to buy like a whole ceramic pot to put it in. So I decided just to take a little bit of burlap that I had and wrap it around. And what's great about burlap is, well, one, it's compostable, but also it's really easy to make a really pretty looking bow without very much talent or effort. You can literally just tie a bow and then pull it out a little bit and it looks like somebody who knows how to do crafting things made it. And then to bring a little bit of that burlap up into the tree, I just cut some strips of it and then tied little bows around a few of the branches. And I did this with the brown burlap and then I also had some white that I tied on there too. The one thing I'll say about this is that when you cut the burlap, if it's a really open weave of burlap like this is, it can sometimes come undone a little bit. So the less fuss, the better. If you just tie the bow and get out of there, it hopefully won't fall apart. And then for some ornaments, I decided to dry some citrus. So I took grapefruit, lemon, and orange, and you slice it super thin, and then you lay it out on a cookie sheet, 
put it in the oven. I put the oven on 200 and left it in there for about two and a half hours. So it does take kind of a long time, but you can sort of just set it and forget it. I did flip them over one time, but other than that, I just left them in the oven for two and a half hours came back and they were dried. So this is a super easy way to make some kind of cool looking ornaments. I like the way they look when the light shines through them. They almost have like this jewel-like quality to them. So we decided to hang some of them in the slider window with the cranberry and popcorn garland, and then also take a few and put them on the tree. So I just took a piece of twine that I had and pressed it through some of the fleshy part of the citrus and then tied a little knot at the top and then just threw it on the tree. And this is another thing, if I decide that I like these and I wanna keep them to decorate next year, you can keep them, they won't go bad because they're dried out. Or if I decide I don't really like them, I can always compost them at the end. I can throw the entire thing, including the twine, into the compost. And then the last ornament that I made is a five-pointed origami star. So let me just tell you the story about me trying to make this origami star. To start, I was gonna use this paper that had come in one of the packages I had ordered recently. It was just like brown paper that was kind of shoved in the box. So I saved it with the intention of making origami star garland. And then I realized you can't really make origami anything with paper that's been crumpled or creased in any way. I was like getting lost in all the crumples. So I had to give that idea up and I ended up just using some plain white sheets of paper. But still, I learned origami is definitely about perfection. If it's not super perfect, you're gonna get like a wonky looking star. So I ended up with one star. I think I tried maybe four or five times. But I got one, so I decided to ditch the idea of making an entire garland out of it because clearly it's not a thing I'm good at. And instead I just made a single ornament to put on the tree. I thought about maybe putting it like on the top of the tree as the star, but then I ended up liking it more as an ornament. I just poked a hole through it with a little bit of thread and hung it on one of the branches. And I'll link down below to the tutorial I used to make the origami star. It's kind of cool, like it looks kind of cool in the end. You just need to be better at crafty things than me. And again, this entire thing can be composted if I decide I don't wanna save it to use another year. So up to this point, all of the things that I've done have all been in the living room. So the trees in the living room, the garlands in the living room, and that was kind of part of my minimalist approach to decorating. I sort of decided you don't need Christmas in every room of the house. We hang out in the living room most often, so I decided to concentrate what I was doing mostly in the living room. That said, the other place where I spend a lot of time is at my desk. So I wanted to do a little bit of something at my desk, not go totally overboard. And I like the idea of doing it with some sort of found object. The thing is, if you live in like a forested area, I feel like this would be really easy to do. You could go pick up some downed branches that have greenery on them, some pine cones. Like there's a lot of options if you live in a place that's not like the desert that I live in. In. But I was like, there's gotta be a way I can do something cool. So I ended up finding like this really cool weathered branch that had been bleached by the sun a little bit. And then I took an old drink bottle that we had, put the stick in there and decided to just hang a few of the ornaments on it. And then to tie it in a little bit with the rest of the decor, I took another piece of twine and just took the twine around the jar and tied a little bow on it. And at first I looked at it and I was like, this is sad looking. And maybe it is a little sad looking, but also it's got like real desert Christmas vibes. I live in the desert, I should honor that climate. We don't have pine cones and berries and evergreens everywhere. So I wanted to do something that looked a little bit more deserty. Des deserty, is that a word? Desert like, desert ish. But it's a good, minimal, and super sustainable way to bring a little bit more Christmas into the house. And it costs next to nothing. I mean, I found the stick and reused the bottle. So then it was just the citrus and the cranberries to make the ornaments. So definitely budget friendly as well. And again, this entire thing is compostable if I choose not to use it again next year. And I do have some old decor pieces that I just keep like in a keepsake box. So I decided to pull a couple of those out, a snowman that my mom had given me, and a little gnome that my sister and her wife had given to me. So just bringing a little bit of the traditional family pieces out onto the desk as well. And my next tip, if you do wanna buy some more traditional decor, if you're not really into like some of the DIY stuff that I've been talking about here, is to shop secondhand. I went down to our local secondhand shop here, which honestly, isn't really that great. And even there, they had some really good stuff and it was cheap. So if you're the type of person who likes to change decor from year to year, or if you like to do like a high volume of decor, 
or if you just like more traditional things, secondhand can be a really good option. There was like cute little boxes and wintry looking houses and mugs. There was a lot of good stuff, even at my not so great thrift store here. So if you're trying to do your decor a little bit more sustainably and you wanna save money, definitely start at your secondhand store and just see what they have. And then if you're someone who likes to change your decor every year, you can always give it back to the secondhand shop at the end of this holiday season. So the last couple things that I did to decorate my home in a minimal and sustainable way are not actually objects at all. So I feel like decorating my house for the holidays is so much more than just like putting up decor pieces. A lot of it is just around kind of the traditions that I've had with my family and things that remind me of this time of the year. So in addition to the things that I put up around the house, while I was decorating, I also cooked some pumpkin bread and this was my aunt's recipe. My family makes it every year. So I found a way to make this very traditional recipe in a vegan way so that it fit with my lifestyle. And just the smell of it is like so nostalgic and feels so holiday to me. It has like all those great spices in it, like nut and ginger and cinnamon. So it just filled the house with the smell of the holidays and the smell of family. I mean, and plus it's delicious. So I do think baking or cooking a family recipe or something that reminds you of the holidays if you don't have family recipes or even just those smells of the season, those things that remind you of the holidays can be part of your entire decor. And then the last thing is music. Again, this is not a physical object, but it's something that really gets me in the holiday spirit. There's so many good Christmas songs out there. There's so many that feel so nostalgic for me. So I will listen to holiday music from Thanksgiving to New Year's. It just really puts me in the holiday spirit. It makes me happy. It warms my heart. So even though it's not a physical object, it's another way to decorate your space. And I have a holiday playlist on Spotify and I will link it down below if anybody wants to listen to all of my favorite songs. So in the end, I'm really happy with how everything turned out. It's very simple. It feels very organic. Everything is compostable. We're gonna plant our tree. I feel like there wasn't a lot of extra waste associated with decorating my house for the holidays. It's almost like our space has just kind of been kissed by a little holiday spirit. It doesn't feel cluttered. It doesn't feel overwhelming. And it was a fun way to spend an afternoon, to be honest. So I hope this gave you some ideas of how you could potentially decorate your space in a sustainable and minimal manner. And let me know in the comments down below, what are some things that you do to decorate your space and celebrate the holidays? All right, that's it for this week's video. If you haven't yet subscribed, please subscribe down below. It really helps my channel a lot and I would be so grateful for it. And please give this video a like if you liked it. I've started a whole playlist for my minimal sustainable holiday videos. I plan on making a few more this season. So I will link that down below below as well. And thank you so much for watching. I make videos every week, so I will see you next Tuesday. Bye everyone. Rushing through the snow. No. Give it to the jingle bells, jingle bells. Happy holidays.